Hello, my name is Ryan. I'm also known as RM2K Dev, and in this video, we're going to be creating a uh, a guard NPC. So off camera, what I've done is I've gone and created another sprite for our guard here. Um, I've shown you guys how to do this about eight times now. So go ahead and just do the same process we did for Bob, and call it guard, and bring in whatever sprite suits you best. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come down into our objects NPC object NPC Bob and we're going to duplicate him. This time we're going to give him the NPC guard down sprite and press OK. We're also going to call him object underscore NPC underscore guard. Select OK, jump back to our home city and we're just going to place the guard somewhere on the map. So I'm just going to place him down here near our hero. There we go, I'm just going to place him right there. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is we're going to come up here to paths and I'm just going to delete this one because I created one earlier. Um, I'm just going to create a new path. We're going to call this path underscore guard. Now what we need to do in the top right hand corner of the paths window there's an option here that says indicate the room to show as background. If you select this you'll get a list of uh, rooms that we have in our game and you can go ahead and just select rm underscore home city. What this does is this brings our city uh, as the backdrop for our path designer. So right in the center of our uh, our guard object here, I'm just going to click and that will place down a dot. Now I'm just going to outline a path that I want him to follow. I'm going to uncheck this closed button here so I can design the path without that getting in the way. And I would like him to go up these stairs just like this. I'm not doing anything... Um, anything uh, specific here. I just want him to ch make a loop. Just come down here, just like that. Might make him go across, down, back to here. Actually, no, let's delete that last one. Let's make him go up here, around, down, and then once you get to the last point and you think you're done, select the closed option and that will finalize the path for you. So once you're done there, tick the little box that says uh, close the form saving the changes and your path has now been saved. Under the sprites NPC uh, folder, let's create a new sprite. I'm just going to call this spur underscore target. So let's just call this underscore follow underscore target. And I'm going to draw you guys a little pokeball because that's all I know how to draw. So I'm going to make that an 8x8 sprite. I'm just going to zoom right in on that. Draw a little pokeball. It's going to be white on the bottom. I'm just going to take the line tool and make it red on the top. There we go. That's our Pokeball. And I'm going to center that and select OK. Now back in our NPC folder, I've created a folder called Base and I've placed the NPC Base inside of that. Um, you should go ahead and do that now just so that your project stays in line. Um, I'm just going to right click on the Base folder and select Create Object. I'm going to call this Obj underscore follow underscore target and I'm gonna give it the sprite that we just uh, created in the NPC folder so select OK on that and open up the object underscore NPC underscore base okay so in the create event uh, open up that uh, line of code let's just add a comment to the top of this because it's not clean and we're gonna call this uh, initiate IVARS there we go now just below that I'm going to say my underscore target equals instance underscore create and then it's going to create it at the X and the Y position of the current character and it's going to be of type object underscore follow underscore target. So this means that every NPC in our game that inherits from the NPC base object will receive a target. Um, whether or not they use that target or not is uh, yet to be said, it's just going to be there for future reference. Um, this might be useful in an instance, say you complete a quest and you want the NPC to then follow a target, we can then make that something that happens. So the NPC is standing still and then you complete the quest, you assign a path and the NPC will then follow the path using the target. Now you might be asking yourself, why am I using paths when these are all physics objects? Because physics objects do not work with paths in Game Maker unless they are kinematic or density of 0.0, .0 I think. Um, so I'm using the paths and the follow target. I'm going to assign the path to the follow target and I'm going to use physics to move the uh, the NPC in that direction. So the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to say 
my underscore path equals negative one. Simple as that. Now in MPC guard under the create event, we're going to get rid of. We're going to set has quest equals false. We're going to set message to say hello there. This town is safe under my control. Period. And then we can just get rid of the rest of these variables because they're not used if the NPC doesn't initiate a quest. The next thing we're going to say is my underscore path equals path underscore guard. So this basically sets up our reference to the path guard script and that's all we need to do for the guard. Back on the NPC base object we need to have in our step event um, we need to create a new script that basically says if my underscore path not equals negative one then we're going to do the following uh, let's leave that blank for now we need to create a user event so let's go into add event select other user defined and let's make that user zero what this user event will do is it will assign the path when it's called so basically we say uh, path underscore start sorry we don't want to do that here we want to say with underscore my underscore target bracket then we want to say path underscore start the path is going to be other dot my underscore path the speed is going to be one the end action will be zero and the absolute will be one because we want it to follow the path absolutely uh, not relative to the NPC object so tick the box uh, and now we go back to our step event and our f last code which was called execute a piece of code now let's say in here follow targets there we go sorry follow path if available if available there we go so if the path doesn't equal negative one which it won't because uh, we've set it inside of guard NPC Bob won't have a path so he'll stand still but if the path is not equal to one we need to find out the uh, direction of the follow target which now should be moving uh, following that path so let's just quickly test our game and make sure that that's happening so that's not happening I'm going to pause the video and find out why and uh, I'll let you guys know what happened in just one second okay so I figured out what was wrong we need to go back to the NPC guard in his create event after we've set the path we need to say event uh, underscore user bracket zero and what this will do is this will trigger that event after we've set the path which then should allow the uh, target to start moving in the path direction so if we chase it you'll see our pokeball is now moving as expected following the path exactly as we defined it so now what we need to do is we need to make our NPC follow that um, so what the way we do that is we go back to our uh, NPC base go back to our step event and go back to our follow path if available code so if the path doesn't equal negative one which means that we've changed it we need to find out the direction of the path so let's say dir equals point underscore direction it's going to be my underscore path dot x sorry my underscore target dot x my target dot y and it's going to be phy position x and we'll do the same for y just like that the next thing we need to do is find out the distance so if we say dist equals and we can just copy this line above and just change the word direction to distance simple as that so now we know the direction and the distance let's say if actually no let's not say if we need to say dx which is going to stand for direction x equals length dir x and what this means is it's going to give us the x coordinate if we traveled a certain length following a certain direction um, the best way of describing this is if we know if we're at x0 y0 and we want to move 30 degrees to the left uh, sorry in 30 degrees from when we are at a length of 20 pixels this will tell us the x and y coordinates given the length and the direction so in our length here let's say 1 and our direction we're going to say dir we do the same for y so we can just copy this and paste it and change all the x's to y's and that will that will handle that for us so the next thing we need to do is just say phy underscore position x plus equals dx phy 
position y plus equals dy. Now what should happen is our here, uh, sorry, our guard object will follow the path but in the wrong direction. So let's resolve that quickly and I think we do that simply by changing these pluses to minuses. So it should be negative dx, negative dy. What this gives us is the, oops I've just created a window, the NPC is now following the path as expected. You'll see he follows paths in a quite nice way. He takes nice smooth corners, as you'll see, and he also follows the path exactly as he should. If we get in his way for some reason, he will catch up to that target and work his way back. Back to his path. And every corner it will get slightly better. He'll recover a slight bit more. Right, so now our NPC is following the path. There is one small issue that we need to address, and that is what happens if we block the NPC and he gets stuck. So if we block him in this instance, let me just push him back over there, what you'll soon see is that he will get stuck. Ah, he won't get stuck because he doesn't address collisions yet. So let's add collisions really quickly. In your NPC base object, add an event of type collision with the system object collision. And inside of that, we just add our code called collide with, just to make sure that this is a valid event. Now, what will happen is our NPC will collide with the building. He should get stuck eventually, and as following the path, he will slowly work his way right and eventually get trapped inside the pub which is about to happen now. A fantastic place to get stuck if you were going to get stuck anywhere but that's not what we want to happen. So inside of our step event for the NPC base object open up the follow path if available code we're going to use that distance variable now. So in this variable we need to say if dist is sorry let me do that again if dist is greater than 32 pixels we need to teleport him back to where he should be so let's just say phy underscore position x equals my underscore target dot x and we'll do the same for y now what will happen this isn't going to be the most elegant solution we'll come up with a pixel perfect solution later he will just teleport back to his target if he gets too far away so he shouldn't be able to get too far away from his target and he just teleports back. What we'll probably end up doing in the future is making a system that just ignores collisions for a moment and then teleports him back to where we think he should be uh, in a nice smooth way so we don't get any strange artifacts like that jump. Uh, the other thing that we can do is we can stand in front of him and talk. The game will pause for a second and he will say hello there, the town is safe under my control. Uh, this is again using the same script that we use to do quests, so our NPC does still work with quests. Um, we don't need to do anything to get quest behavior, and that's part of the uh, inheritance that we've been working on this whole time. And, you know, just general good architecture for our game. So, uh, once again, thank you guys for watching. Um, follow me on Twitter, it's at RM2KDev. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and like this video. Uh, I would appreciate that very much.